We got a C200 on loan from Lens Pro to go to test it out and give you guys our thoughts. As always, with all of my reviews, this is not a super in-depth scientific look. Instead, it's just my experience with the camera in a short period of time, just messing around with it, how I would actually use it on a project. So first is the body, the sexy body, which the C200 just looks like the C100 after a solid workout. And now the C200 is a totally new camera. It isn't the C100 Mark III, even though it sort of feels that way. But I'm going to talk about it as if it is an upgrade to the C100 Mark II because for me, it pretty much is. So there are a few major improvements here. First is the audio inputs and controls are now off the handle and on the actual body. This is a massive improvement for me. So now if you need to strip the body down oh, yeah. to the- What are you gonna do with it? Perverted. You aren't losing your audio options anymore. Not to mention, it makes cable management a lot better. Having my XLRs draping off the side handle of the C100 was always an annoyance for me. We also, of course, have our audio selections and controls right on the body as well, with our input selections here and the volume control in the back. Also back here, we have one of our many assignable buttons, joystick, and then the menu buttons. Then we have two SD slots with a much better design for the car doors. And next to that, you'll have the SDI headphones, ethernet, and HDMI. Then around to the smart side of the camera, we have a very familiar layout with two large differences. First, we have the motorized control over the ND filters, just like we have with the C300 Mark II, which is so much better than the toggle wheel. Then we have our slot for the CFast card. This CFast card is only for shooting RAW with Canon Cinema RAW light, but we'll get to that in a minute. Then two of the biggest improvements that make me a happy man is the viewfinder, which is really solid, and the monitor. Great image on here, not super great in the sunlight, but in those moments, the viewfinder is really solid. Mainly, it's how it can be mounted onto the camera. It can swivel in any direction needed and can be mounted in different places for plenty of options, so it definitely is the best of the C line in that area. You can see here that you have some control on the monitor as well to easily navigate the menu system, which, speaking of, is kind of great. It's a bit more simplistic and intuitive compared to the others in this line, and I already love those menus. Canon always does a great job with their menu layouts and continue to improve it over time. But all of your options are going to be very similar to what you get in the C100 or C100 Mark II, so I'm not gonna go option by option here, but we will get into some of it while shooting. And speaking of shooting, for internal recording, you have two main options here, either MP4 or RAW. With MP4, you can shoot up to 4K at 150 megabits per second, 8-bit 420 at a max of 60 frames per second. Or you could swap over to the CFast card and record RAW at 4K 12-bit with 15 stops of dynamic range. This is amazing and has excellent image quality, but it comes with the drawback of massive files. With a 64 gig CFast card, I can only get eight minutes of 4K raw footage, eight minutes. If I swap over to the SD with MP4, I can get about five times the amount of footage. And the post process is more difficult as well with these raw files. The C200 is recording to files that are not compatible with most things just yet, so you need to convert them before you use them. And that is also not the shortest process ever. However, I don't see this as much of a problem. It's a little annoying, but eventually Premiere and the like will support this. And although these files are massive and tough to work with, the image quality that you're getting right out of camera on a sub $10,000 camera is just crazy. And I know on paper that it sounds like the MP4 is a big bummer, but it's not. The quality is actually really solid. Even when overexposing, I'm able to really bend the image to still salvage without breaking it. Same with underexposure. I mean, regardless, this is 420, so you have to keep that in mind. But again, even in more difficult scenarios, like filming a character against a bright midday window with only the light coming into the room through that window, you can see that I was able to retain some detail outside the window without blowing it out too much and making it ugly and I still have some detail with the subject and some room to grade. Then outside filming the subject on the shadow side with the brightest part of the sky right behind him I'm able to keep all the detail in the sky and plenty of detail on my talent as well without any bounce. So even in the MP4 the dynamic range is solid and the image holds together pretty well and I'm pushing the grade pretty hard on a lot of these. However when we do throw it into a scene where we have several colors and a lot of contrast happening it again does pretty well but you have to be careful with how hard you push your grade. While shooting MP4 with a shot like this, eventually the image is going to start breaking in the grade, but it's still usable, just fragile. So you have to be more gentle unless you're shooting raw, which holds together amazingly well, of course. Then we have the autofocus, which like the C300 Mark II works really well, but the upside here is that the monitor is touchscreen. So you can tap where you want the focus to be placed. So as a character moves through a scene, or if you just want to do an automated rack, you just tap to where you want to go. Then there's tracking here as well. You tap 
tap on what you want the camera to track and it does a great job of locking on and keeping whatever that is in focus. Of course, you need a lens with autofocus capabilities. For these tests, I was mostly using the Sigma 14 millimeter lens that we got from Lens Pro to go. Then another thing I'm digging is the slow motion. With this one, you can get 120 frames per second at 1080. And the big upside here is that unlike my C300 Mark II or any of the others, this does not crop in on the image. You're using the whole sensor for this and it's solid. One problem I did find here is once I graded, I found some nasty moray and aliasing like you can see here on this door. So you'll wanna keep that in mind when you're shooting and shoot accordingly. But other than that, it's solid. Now we take a break and look at the type of footage you can get with this. If you're a budding filmmaker, entrepreneur, innovator, domain.com is a place to go when the next idea hits you. When you buy a domain name from domain.com, you're taking the first steps in creating an identity and vision for your brand or idea. And the world's top two premier most recognized domain name extensions are .com and .net, which means those are the ones that are gonna help you build your brand and expand your presence online the best. And for a limited time from now until August 31st, you can get 35% off by using the coupon code FILMJUMBO. When you get domain names, web hosting, and email, just use that coupon code. And when you think domain names, think domain.com. Logo. I only had the camera for a short amount of time, but we were able to grab a few hours to go out and shoot some tests, including some with my SLR Magic anamorphic lenses. So you're gonna be seeing a lot of that in there too. Ready to go. <laughs> All of that that you just saw was a mixture between the raw footage and the MP4 footage with some anamorphic and regular shots thrown in. I have to say, I really like this camera. Definitely seems like something that's made for someone like me. You have the MP4 for quick turnaround stuff and then the raw option for bigger projects like short films. And if I owned it, that's exactly how I would shoot. I would use the MP4 for Film Riot and shoot all my shorts on raw with the proxies, which you can record at the same time. So you're recording raw to the CFast card while getting those proxies to the SD card that you can edit with and then swap out later. It really gives you the best of both worlds in a lot of ways. The main downside here for me is the MP4 though. Although it's better than I thought it was gonna be, I wouldn't want to use it for anything other than the stuff that's intended to just live online. So there's this huge gap between the MP4 and the RAW in what workflow you might need. If this camera had ProRes, it would, it would be all the things, just all of them. I would buy 10 of them and kiss them goodnight every night. The C700 can record in ProRes, so I was really hoping the C200 would as well, even at a lower form of it, but sadly, no. This is still a great camera though. The quality that you can get out of it from the image and the audio, it's all very impressive, especially for the price. But like I always say, if you're considering buying this, it's still a good idea to rent it before you buy it to make sure that it really is the right camera for you. If you are interested in that, I have a link below for where you can rent the C200 and other cameras and lenses, but that is it for today. And I'll see you next week when I lock a doll in a closet by wallpapering the inside with pages from the Bible.